Welcome back to Meet the Authors. We're glad to have you join us in our home. Today, our guest is Elaine McDermott. Elaine, thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Nice to be here. Oh, it's good to see you again. Elaine was on our show earlier uh, at the beginning of our program, and uh, she's come out with a new book, and we're welcoming her back with the second of her poetry books, right? Second book? This is actually the fifth. The fifth book. Uh -huh. All right, great. Point it, show us the camera, and tell us about your book. Well, um, Hold it up a little bit. Okay. This book just came out in November of this year, and uh, it, it's a, a, a sort of a blending of my um, native city, New Orleans, and also my life here on Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, I, I also touch on some things that, that touch on the human condition, such as, um, well, such, such as um, dementia, death, divorce, just different things that, that touch on all of us. That's so important. That's what makes poetry and about life in general really can, the passion of these real events. And to write about them in prose is fine, but when you get a poem, you really can feel the, the essence, the, the, the mood of what's going on. Uh -huh. uh, I love your poetry. Five books. I've read, I've read a lot of this and the other one that we talked about earlier. And this one is in a lot of different subjects. Uh, tell us about how you decided to, to categorize your poems. Uh -huh. Well, when, when I, I talk about uh, New Orleans, uh, about the scenes and people there, I, I have that, uh, that, that's all in one category under Once Upon a Streetcar. Once Upon a Streetcar. After the St. Charles Streetcar, yeah. of course. And then uh, Cruise in the Coast, these, these are scenes that you would see on, on the coast. Uh, it deals with canoeing, fishing, just, just different, different things that relate to the coast. And um, I've also got a, one, one section where I, I base my, my poetry on, on portraits. Poetry on other poems. On, on, on other portraits. So like you've told us, uh, told me earlier that, that you have certain poems that you really admire, certain poets like T.S. Eliot and such. Tell us a little bit about how you became inspired to, to write poetry. Well, I, I first fell in love with poetry as a child, listening to nursery rhymes. Oh, yeah. Fell in love with the, uh, the rhyme and the rhythm. And I actually began writing as a teenager. And then I got a little bit more serious later and, and read some of the poets. I, uh, I read the uh, romantics, and uh, especially like Wordsworth and his uh, Tintern Abbey. I, I love the imagery in their poems. I like T.S. Eliot. Uh, Dylan Thomas. Just, oh, Dylan just, Thomas is classic, yeah. All, all the greats, you know, and, and you learn so much reading their poems. It, it really does make you want to be a better poet. I guess so. My father was a poet, and uh, he kept saying, I'll never be as good as the masters. But his poetry was pretty good. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of editing. Yeah. You have to really, you know. Oh, yeah. I've always said that, in, you know, in a, a novel, you can write anything, like on and on and on. Short story, you want to make every sentence important. Uh -huh. But a poem, every single word has to be exact, has to be just the right meaning that you yeah. want for it. That, that's part of the pleasure of, of writing, just um, taking, finding the right word to create an image. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just the whole process of writing that brings me so much pleasure. Oh, it is. It's such a joy. How about reading one of your poems for us? Oh, okay. I'd love to. And then afterwards, I'm going to read one of her poems, too. Oh, just great. That you know. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, this is, Today She Wears the Flower Dress. She enters the church wearing the flower dress, sits in the pew in front of me. When the priest invites all to greet one another, I extend my hand to hers. She takes it and smiles while her eyes, blue as glaciers, drift somewhere beyond me. <clears throat> Today, she wears the flower dress. Next Sunday, she will wear the purple one. All others hang forgotten in her closet. Her hair, once silken, now dull and tangled, is tied back. <coughs> Excuse me. Straight wisps falling down her face. Mass is over, and she turns to me. Are you new here? <coughs> I'm sorry. No, I reply remembering all those Sunday brunches. Oh, isn't that lovely? Thank you. I like these images. I like the sense of, of being down home, <coughs> going to church, and getting those flowery dresses. And, and I can just see that. I, of course, we all go to church on, uh, when we're younger, and some even, and most of us as older, and you get that, that feeling of the people coming in and communicating with them. It's a lovely image. Oh, yeah. 
How did, did that did that poem become inspired about something in particular from your experience? Well, I had an aunt who had dementia, uh -huh. and and some friends, and it's kind of based roughly on on sort of two or three of them together. Nice. Uh -huh. now I'm going to read this one, which I picked out earlier. <coughs> this is really nice. This is a, uh, a one obviously you'll see from New Orleans. It's called The Spirit of Marie Laveau. It's whispered on a starless night that when the fog rolls in, Marie Laveau seen in the streets, a woman wild with gin. She had a lover long ago who proved to be untrue. She made a doll that looked like him and practiced her voodoo. At the Silver Slipper Palace, a chorus girl named Belle longed for Marie's dark skin creole and placed him in her spell. Marie then made a man of wood. She dressed him bold and smart. She found a sharp and silver pin and stabbed him in the heart. He died that night in young Belle's arms. Marie went mad with pain. She made a doll that looked like Belle and found her pin again. <coughs> It's whispered on a stormy night that above the thunder's din, Marie is heard out in the streets, repenting of her sin. It's a lovely <laughs> book. You're a great poet. Thank you for coming Thank on you. the show. Thank you so much. It's so much to have you here, Elaine. You have wonderful things. So us where she can get a, people can get a book. Once more time, as you can get it from the email and also at Southern Southbound Books here in Biloxi and at the Visitor Center. Once right, so again, thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you. you have a book you want printed? I've been using Packham of Korea for over 10 years. They produce high quality hardcover books such as my Princess Priscilla series, Mississippi history books, and my photojournalism. They'll handle your printing, finishing, binding, and assembly of every project and ship it directly to your home or storage unit. Their prices are very reasonable. Contact their local agent, Cecile Corona, at this email address and I promise you'll be delighted too.